So this one is called Wild Sea Transatlantic. And uh, what, what's happening in this picture is that I'm thinking about a novel by Octavia Butler. And the novel is called Wild Seed. It's one of my favorite novels. And in the novel, uh, a warlike type character comes from the past, <clears throat> from ancient Nubia, to seduce a woman who lives in West Africa at the edge of a village. She's lived for 300 years. And she's outlived, I think, eight generations of her children. And he seduces her with this idea that he's going to become her lover and help her produce children. So she goes on this journey and the year is about 17 or 1800 and they go together walking alongside the slave trade to a ship that he, he has and on the ship from the best of my memory he has um, some of his children as well as people that he's collected from around the world. So the warlock is from ancient Nubia and in the story he has this project that's kind of like a, a genetic project uh, and he's trying to produce this like what his idea of a perfect superhuman being is so he goes around the world at this time which is like 17th or 18th century collecting people who have extraordinary gifts and talents and he has a free co a colony i'm sorry it's not free but it, they're they're not it's not there aren't slaves there so there's a colony in upstate new york that he takes them to and there he tells people who they need to mate with and they're not allowed to leave if they come there. Um, another thing about this character is that he, um, he's a spirit and he doesn't actually have his own body anymore. He's an energy form. So he has to kill someone in order to take on their body in order to exist. And so he takes on different bodies throughout the story. So that's why here in this representation of the slave ship, I also have like people that are like on hangers. So it's like different outfits for him. And he has to constantly change depending on how much of the body he uses up based on the energy that he needs to do whatever he's doing in everyday life. Um, and so um, a special, the special talents of the main character, I, I can't remember her name right now. I think it's like Anyanwe. Um, and I think, I believe she's Igbo from Nigeria, is that she can, sh she's a shapeshifter. She can change shapes. And one of her favorite shapes to become is a dolphin and she becomes a dolphin as um, she's going on the ship to America. Um, especially when she wants to escape him, when she wants to get away from him, she likes to sh change into something that's a little bit more difficult for him to figure out. But he can always find her, even, it's almost like he can smell her and he has some sixth sense. So the one at the, at the front is actually his child. And at some point I believe she, he makes her, um, have kids with him so for him every person is a project and not really a real being that he's going to like love and care for every woman that he brings into his life And um, later in the story, what happens is that she does manage to finally escape him. It's almost like she kind of goes through a domestic violence or a battered woman type syndrome, where she has to build up her self-esteem and her power and um, not be afraid of being killed in order to start a new life. Um, so he will hunt anyone down if they leave the colony. And at some point she does leave the colony and she goes and she starts her own colony, which he actually finds admirable and fascinating. And the difference, she does the same exact thing that he does, which is to 
invite people to come rather than take them. She invites them to come to her colony and to start a life and to work on this project of creating a beautiful, perfect human being. But people can come and go freely and they can leave whenever they want to leave. And she won't hunt, she won't hunt them or kill them. So, um, so the motion of this piece is like a map. And I really wanted to deal with the transatlantic slave trade and um, the Middle Passage. So that's why the composition is set up this way with the characters moving in this direction, which is like from Africa to the United States, or you know, in the case of you know, 12, six to 12 million people, they could have gone to the Caribbean, they could have gone to Brazil, any number of places that they were going. Anyways, this is what I wanted to represent. So you can even see around the edges that there are latitude and longitudes. I'm extending this artwork. So I'm extending the tree and the fire and the atmosphere here, which is kind of like the sky, it's pink, and uh, a little bit of the sky over here too. And the reason I'm doing that is just to visually balance the composition a bit more. Um, sometimes when I'm drawing, um, I mean, when I do the outline, like the cartoon or the, the drawing of the um, whatever it's gonna be painted, um, the balance feels different once I add in mass, which is like the colors and the shapes, you know, the weight, the volume. Just block in a little bit of color. This is the finished work of Wild Sea Transatlantic and I originally was just going to add a section to the artwork but um, I had to completely rework it and just scrap that idea because it just sometimes it just happens like it just it just wasn't working so I decided to cut it up and collage it because then I would have more control over the elements and you know I would be able to delicately rebalance it and play with it until it got to the right place. And um, actually, I really have always wanted to do a little bit more with collage, and so I'm really excited about seeing this. And it's actually inspiring me in a, another direction with some of my other work here, as you can see. And so I'm attempting a, same, a similar technique with something else I did that I didn't really care too much for the way it came out. So I'm cutting it up in pieces and uh, redrawn some parts, and then I'm gonna collage it together before it creates a finished work on fabric. So I still think of myself as a painter, even if I'm collaging, if I'm doing this mixed media, if I'm working with different types of paper, because, um, because I'm engaged with the history of painting and I mostly look at painters' work and I understand what, uh, the history of what they're doing and um, you know, those type of techniques. So um, the flow is still the same. Uh, it's just that um, I just rebalance the work and I actually was able to add, I was able to extend the work by about 10 to 12 inches overall. So um, that's what happened with this artwork. Um, I have a couple friends who asked me about, you know, why do they have big heads? <laughs> 
and um, I guess they have big heads because I'm working with a caricature type of um, reference in my work and some of it comes from drawing portraits and caricatures at an amusement park when I was a teenager and some of it is also looking at um, funny uh, funny ways that um, figures have been done historically in folk art and in say for example African art and like black American folk art to be more specific so the head is important so the head is big um, hands and feet are sometimes small and then the body is also small in proportion to the head so this gives this sort of like a whimsical cartoon like feeling to the work that I really enjoy. Um, the colors help that too obviously I'm using pretty bright colors sometimes people say why do you use such bright colors when you know the subject matter is so sad and I don't know I think it should be fun to look at <laughs> and I like bright colors um, I also recognize that it functions in a way to kind of trick the viewer into looking at the work like they approach it and they go oh that looks like it's going to be fun and it's going to be silly and it's going to be light but then I'm really dealing with a lot of heavy subjects in the work so you know rather than beat people over the head to get them to come look at it I kind of entice them with the candy colors so that's what I like to do. Some artists find it really difficult to describe their work um, I kind of maybe I'm one of those I'm not really sure but um I, t I have different answers depending on who I'm talking to. If it's just, um, if it's an art person, I say more specific language that's kind of a little bit art speaky. And then if it's everyday regular people um, who don't really have a lot of art training, um, then I just, I say I'm a storyteller in my art and that I like to tell stories. And um, so with um, more academic people or art people, I say I'm a narrative painter which is the same thing, it just sounds a little bit more fancy, I guess. Um, and um, that it's, the work is political cartoony and faux naive. Um, it's usually brightly colored. And um, lately I have been um, presenting my work on fabric. Still think of myself as a painter. However, um, I'm exploring different media. I'm using like a monochromatic color scheme as the underpainting. Uh, to help me figure out like how to actually paint the work. I like telling stories because um, that's a really good question. I guess it's the, one of the most interesting things to hear besides music. Um, I think stories have a lot packed into them like how we see the world, um, how we think about things, um, I'm just uh, struck by the imagery and stories a lot of the time and um, what people discover and so I feel that there are a lot of stories that haven't been told about black women in America <clears throat> and I'm really interested in uh, creating dialogue around black women's experiences whether contemporary or historical or even like future thoughts um, and ideas and so that is why I like to do storytelling because I want to feel space fill gaps where there isn't enough. I have a lot of references um, for, as, for art um, and when I'm making artwork I guess I kind of often think of um, maybe two or three different artworks or two or three different artists that I have in mind when I'm making things. Um, maybe that's why sometimes the work comes out pretty eclectic but um, just off the top of my head because there's probably a rotating palette of uh, references in my head of like 200 artists but um, maybe Jacob Lawrence is um, a number one artist um, let's see um, really like um, Leslie Saar, Xiomara de Oliver um, Wow um, William William H Johnson Carrie James Marshall I mean I could just keep keep going on and on and on but yeah, typically they're painters who tell stories as well. And uh, the ones that I might think about a lot are African-American, but I also look at things like Persian miniatures and um, Asian scroll paintings. And um, uh, someone like uh, Florine Stettheimer is, I find interesting. Um, she's Jewish, I think she's Jewish. Uh, she was a New York white woman who painted in the mainly in the 20s. I also love Archibald Motley. So there's definitely um, a lot of Harlem Renaissance painters in my um, 
references because I feel like they were doing this project of documenting African American life while trying to create, um, being the first artist to really sit down and try to create a look to African American art. And so um, their work figures prominently in my thoughts when I'm making my work. What direction do I see myself going into? Um, I can, I will. I think right now I'm still going to stick with painting, and I'm still going to stick with storytelling and representation. I feel like that one, that's a commitment that's going to go for a really, really long time because there's just I already have like ten thousand ideas. <laughs> um, but recently, in the in the summertime, when I did my residency in Miami with um, ESKF a Foundation at Mana. Um, I have come up with a way to reorganize the way that I'm working so that I can cover lots of different themes and subject matter that I have always wanted to and can uh, focus my work a bit more and have something that people can follow. So actually what I'm working on right now is a little love story and um, my objective is to create like maybe 250 of these little love stories that come from everyday black life um, and it's um, and uh, so this, this, this is a scene from, inspired by a trip that I had to Charlotte, North Carolina, where my sister lives. And um, the other project is uh, an intertextual, his, historical uh, fiction type of narrative that is metaphorical and not necessarily linear, um, where I can like explore more difficult concepts um, that have to do with African-American placemaking, women and interdependence and survival and um, history, the present, and the Afro future. <laughs> so. everything together I don't care what it is like <laughs> well, inks with tempera and watercolor and you know oil on top of acrylic I, I really just care about the colors that's what I'm that's what I'm about I'm all about the colors 